In today's video, I attempt to beat Grounded using no armor. My goals are to beat all seven bosses and finish the game with no armor equipped. This means no bubble helmet, no fin flops, and no gas mask. Will I be able to complete the challenge, or will the infected broodmother prove to be too hard? Don't forget, I stream all of these challenges over on Twitch at twitch.tv slash paralyzer. So, if you want to see me complete them live, be sure to tune in. I began the game by creating the world, which is on medium difficulty. This is because mild is way too easy, and woe is way too hard. The only other setting I changed was turning faction reactivity off, because I didn't have time to build some huge elaborate base in order to defend from raids. As always, I awoke in the kids case, where I would begin my journey. I headed out and collected some basic resources, including two aphids, which I could use to make a lovely pair of slippers. Oh wait. I analysed plant fibre, sap and a sprig. Now usually, I'd do a pebbler instead of a sprig, but I'm dumb. So, I headed to another field station, where I was able to analyse the pebbler, along with crude rope and mite fuzz. I then proceeded to craft my basic tier 1 tools. While collecting acorns, a stupid red ant walked onto it and got a hit, making him angry at me. Once the ants were taken care of, I was then attacked by an orb weaver, and another ant. I was trying to escape, but the ants kept following me, and I just couldn't escape, and eventually, I took my first death to ants. What a fantastic start to the challenge. I headed back and took on a lava. Right after taking him out, another one snuck up on me and started attacking. Similar to the ants, I met the same fate and death number two was already upon us. After our first two deaths, I decided to collect some acorn shells. I'm not sure why, because I couldn't use them to make armor. Maybe it was the brain damage caused by the lava. With the acorns, I made a shovel, which I then used to dig up some grubs, giving me grub hide. I analysed weevil meat and then made the weevil shield, which was one of the few pieces of protective gear that we could use. I wanted a shield as it would allow me to block attacks as long as I had stamina, meaning I didn't have to perfect block everything to avoid damage. With some amount of defence acquired, I headed to the wire to take out the lawn mites. While here, I was able to unlock our first mutation, which was the first phase of parry master. Who would have guessed it? Not me. I instantly equipped it and then cut down a weed stem for the dandelion tuft, which I would use to avoid fall damage. I activated the mysterious machine and then helped burgle and activated the ASL using the science shop to unlock the smithing station. While in a cave, I grabbed a marble shard, although quickly realized this would be almost useless as I had no armor to upgrade. This is why shields should be upgradable. I used a pebble spear I had crafted to make light work of a red soldier ant before using its mandibles to make the red ant club and then used the acorn shells to build a chest to store my items. Then, with the plates, I made myself a smithing station, which I would later use to upgrade my weapons. I organized my inventory and then added a roasting spit to my little base, allowing me to get some good food. I witnessed a huge brawl between the red ants and a ladybug, with the ladybug losing. I went to loot its body and died instantly, making me also a loser. I was feeling confident, so it's time to take on our first wolf spider. This helped me to unlock the second phase of parry master, and when I was almost at the end of the fight, I died to a grass momentum glitch. Are you serious right now, bro? But I don't back down from a challenge, and on my second attempt, I made sure to avoid the grass, allowing me to take down the wolf spider and unlock the first stage of mythriditism. And just for the fun of it, I decided to take out another one. While in this area, I headed into the Four Leaf Clover Cave as I wanted to unlock the first phase of the Coupe de Gras mutation. While taking on some bombardiers, I managed to unlock the third and final phase of Parry Master. We're five minutes into the video and I already have this maxed out, which just shows how many perfect blocks I have to do in order to complete this challenge. You'll be able to see the exact number of perfect blocks at the end of the video on the report card. Time to venture into the hedge, where I began by using the resource analyzer to unlock a bunch of new recipes. I then headed deeper and activated the surveyor scanner, as I knew this would be useful later. I dropped in and grabbed the first piece of the password before becoming overwhelmed by spiderlings and dying yet again. After retrieving my gear, I was able to get the second piece of the password before unlocking the first stage of Chopper and grabbing the aphid figurine, which unlocked the first phase of Rascal Rogue. I proceeded to grab the third password piece and headed to the storage room, where I obtained five silk rope. I grabbed the final password piece and then activated the computer, allowing me to get the hedge super chip along with our first duper disc. 
Before leaving the hedge, I made sure to grab the Broodmother BLT recipe. On the way home, I took on two more bombardier beetles, as I knew I would need their glands and parts for recipes. Once home, I realised that my chest was so full, I had to make another to store all my items, which were really well organised. What well, I for? I went back to the oak tree lab and gave Burgle the red anthill chip and the hedge super chip, before inserting the duper disc into the super duper. I then headed to the science shop to unlock fibre bandage efficiency, meat shield and the canteen upgrade. I headed back to the base and collected some silk rope, allowing me to craft the insect axe, which would go well with my spider fang dagger. With the dagger in hand, I headed into the exposed pipe on the edge of the haze, but it was too dark, so I came back with some slime mould torches. This allowed me to get into the haze lab and loot the skeleton for the defence badge. This is the only trinket in the game that increases defence, and it does so by 25%, whilst only decreasing damage dealt by 10% making it the best choice for this challenge. I headed deeper into the lab, grabbing more granola bars and flicking the switch. I got to the final door and unlocked the first phase of Natural Explorer, but I wasn't sure if I was ready to take on the infected ladybug. After some deliberation, I decided that I at least had to give it a go. My initial strategy was just to avoid the ladybug attacks and use my axe to take out the infected mites as they're weak to chopping damage. With them taken care of, I started throwing the red ant club at the infected ladybug as it keeps her in a stun loop, making this an easy kill. Beating her unlocked truffle tussle and allowed me to enter the final room, collecting the haze super chip, second duper disc, and some brat bursts and granola bars. Back to the oak lab to give Burgle the super chip and unlock both the oven and the cookery. With the bombs acquired, I headed to the secret lab to get the pinch whacker as this is one of the best early game weapons. While running around, I also unlocked phase one of Cardio Fan, a personal favorite of mine. I then made the smoothie maker and used it to craft some liquid gills and fluid flippers smoothies to help me in the pond. My first task in the pond was to register enough landmarks to unlock the Mertine mutation for quicker swim speed and more time underwater. This, combined with the help from the smoothies, allowed me to make it to the pond lab with 7 seconds of oxygen remaining. Now that I was in the lab, it was time to begin the process of activating all the breakers. I first began by activating the lever and then used the give up feature. This allows me to drop all my stuff on the ground and then go to activate all three breakers and die after each one, as I won't drop anything and then pick up my gear once I was done. I activated the computer and headed into the dome room. I made light work of the robots before unlocking the dome and grabbing the pond super chip, along with the duper disc. While underwater, I was trying to kill a diving bell spider for air, but I ended up jade crafting. Oh my god. There he is. Oh. No. No. I headed to another Mega Milk Molar and drowned yet again. I headed back into the cave to grab the Mossy Key before heading to a different cave for another Mega Milk Molar and to collect my loot before jade crafting yet again. I tried to get back to my gear, but didn't even have enough oxygen to swim that far. I collected the final molar in the cave before jade crafting yet again, and then drowning again. I decided to use the recover backpacks feature to get my gear, because without any armor, I didn't have enough breathing time to survive. Once home, I made the insect hammer, meaning I could now collect milk molars on land as well. Time for a milk molar spree. I'm not going to show them all, but I collected practically every milk molar in the lower yard, including the ones protected by enemies like this wolf spider. Using my first eight, I increased my max mutation slots by two, which is always my priority. I also collected the mints from the mint box and began eating them to unlock fresh defense, as I was going to need sizzle protection to collect charcoal later, and I couldn't exactly use the antlion armor. Eight more molars and I got my fifth and final mutation slot, as well as boosting my max health by 55 and increasing my max consumable stack size. Back to the underwater treasure chest to use the key and collect the chip 
and the Mega Milk Molar. Before leaving the pond, I headed back to the dome to collect some mussel sprouts for smoothies later. Back home again, where I was upgrading my pinch whacker to level 5, which can only mean one thing. Time for the Black Ant Lab. While on my way, I ate a spicy shard to unlock phase 1 of spicy safety, as this mutation would massively increase my defense against some enemies. Into the Black Ant Hill now, where I first gained clearance level A, before heading into the storage room to loot a chest and grab a bunch more granola bars. I then gained clearance level B, and then increased my healing, max health, and max stamina for the fight. The mutations I decided to use were spicy safety, cardio fan, Coupe de Gras, Meat Shield, and Parry Master. Spicy Safety doesn't actually help here, but I had no mutations that would. Time for the Assistant Manager, and I could tell straight away how this fight was going to go. After a few short minutes, I was easily able to take it out, giving me a thousand raw science, the key card, and shocking dismissal. This means I'm 1-0 against the bosses so far. I used the card to get to the Black Ant Hill Super Chip, meaning we had all Super Chips now too. I headed to the sandbox and used the card for a second time to get the sandbox chip, before using my black ant shovel, which I had crafted in the anthill, to dig up the molten moat key and unlock the moat chest, giving me the salt morning star recipe and another milk molar. Back to the oak lab to give Burgle both of the chips and then insert the final two duper discs, meaning we could now duplicate any item. With the assistant manager keycard, I unlocked the secret room, giving me the zipper, as well as some upgrade rocks and brat bursts. I used the science shop to purchase all of the glove recipes, along with the glue masher, and while running around, I also unlocked phase 2 of cardio fan, which is still one of the best mutations in the game. Back to the makeshift base, where I completed the glue masher, and then added another item to my overflowing chests. I made myself a black ant shield, which is slightly better than its weevil counterpart, as it has a higher block strength and more durability. After talking with Burgle, I was able to get the giant scabby fuse, and then used a bomb to break the rock, allowing me to access the picnic table. I decided to break a crow feather, and by complete luck, I got one of the worst trinkets in the game. I headed to the centre of the maze, which unlocked the second phase of Natural Explorer, and then rolled the dice, which unlocked the final phase of Coupe de Gras. But there was a problem. I'd forgotten the key. So I jumped off the picnic table and headed to the exposed pipe to collect the Minotaur Maze key. I then went all the way back to the centre of the maze and unlocked the chest, giving me the Picnic Burgle Chip, a Mega Milk Molar, and some upgrade rocks. On the way home, I saw a stink bug fighting two bombardier beetles. The stink bug managed to take them both out, and at the end of it all, it was me who was the true victor. I gave Burgle the picnic Burgle chip, and then unlocked the mint mace recipe, as I thought I would use it later. But spoiler alert, I never crafted it. It was time to collect some charcoal now, as I wanted an oven. Fresh defense and granola bars were what kept me alive here, and I successfully collected enough charcoal to make my first oven. I also collected the resources for a bed to get buffs when sleeping. Time to enter the haze, this time using a gastro goo smoothie, and I then plugged it using a gum nugget that I had collected from the picnic table earlier. The reason I did this was to allow me to freely explore the haze and collect all of the molars and other useful resources. Like for example, the juicy mutation, the worst mutation in the game that I will never use. I then used the infected weevil to open up the haze lab for me, allowing me to go back inside to break the haze fungus. This was because I wanted the fungal growth trinket to potentially use it against the infected broodmother later in the game. While taking on spiders in a cave, I unlocked the second phase of Chopper, which I was really enjoying using in this run, as it is now one of the better mutations in the game. Get to the Chopper! I headed home and collected the broodmother BLT from the oven, meaning it was time to prepare. I went back to the red ant nest and collected a couple of red ant eggs, which I then analyzed unlocking the Brat Burst recipe and allowing me to craft two more, bringing our total to three. I also decided to finish the cookery, which unlocked Coziness level one, although I quickly realized I had no recipes unlocked for meals, so it was back to the science shop to buy the Haze cookbook, which allowed me to make a spider slider. The mutations I decided to use for the fight were Spicy Safety, Cardio Fan, Mithridatism, Shocking Dismissal, and Coupe de Gras. 
as I wasn't too worried, so opted for high offense and medium defense. The Broodmother dropped in, and already my weapon was doing decent damage, so I was confident. Part I usually find hard about this fight is she attacks really slowly, so I end up blocking too quickly as I'm used to fighting Widows and Wolf Spiders. The first wave of Spiderlings arrived, and I dropped a perfect Brat Burst, taking them all out. My third bomb wasn't so successful, but I was able to take out the remaining juniors with an electric attack, and then finish off the Broodmother. This unlocked Mom Jeans, and I also somehow got the Trinket when looting. That's like a 1 in 100 chance. I would be really excited if I was ever going to use it. Yes! 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 No! 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 When I got home, I considered making the Club of the Mother Demon, but ultimately decided against it, as I needed the parts for the Mantis Kebab and the fangs for the Moldy Hoagie later, and I couldn't be bothered fighting the Broodmother a second time. With the lower yard complete, it was time to head to the upper yard, and we were first off to the Termite Nest, as I wanted a Tier 3 Axe. With the parts I needed obtained from the Soldier, I next headed to the Ravine to take on some Black Ox Beetles. Unfortunately, it wasn't my lucky day, as the first dropped only a single part, and then the second dropped only two. Regardless, I had now obtained enough tough gunk to make the Termite Axe, giving us a much needed upgrade. Before leaving the Termite Nest, I grabbed the secret bag containing five twinkling shells and then headed inside to the king's lair. I got the mega milk molar, but then magically died to the king. I came back to grab my stuff and then also grabbed the chip before leaving. No need to kill the king since we don't need the carapaces for anything. Once I had left, I saw a helpless scarab and was able to sneak up on it and kill it. But sadly, I only got two twinkling shells, taking our total to seven. It was now time to take on some ladybirds, as I wanted to clear the area to collect the pupa hide above. They also gave tough gunk, which I could use for weapons later. I collected the power droplet, as this video was made prior to 1.2.4, meaning there was a certain boss I'd need it for. With my termite axe acquired, I was now able to enter the milk molar bottle in the upper yard and collect all five of the milk molars inside. Time for another black ox beetle, and I got three more parts. I was raging that I still had no horn from three kills, but then realized my inventory was full, and when I checked, there was a horn on the ground waiting for me. I headed back home to craft the Black Ox Hammer, meaning we now had both Tier 3 tools. I was in the sandbox to collect the molars when I took a random death to an antlion, even though I was blocking with my shield and had plenty of stamina. Weird. The game is broken, EA Sports! The game is broken! Off to the haze now, and I broke a fungal growth and somehow got the fungal charm. Talk about lucky. Ironically, I don't think I ever ended up using it, but it was still cool to have, I guess. I made myself our first elemental weapon by using a recipe we had collected earlier to make the Salt Morning Star. I was typically sticking to one-handed weapons for this playthrough, as it would allow me to block without parrying every time and still avoid damage because of how good shields are. I also upgraded my Termite Axe down the Fresh Path, meaning we now had two out of four elemental weapons. Into the Pond Lab we go. Of course, I had to use smoothies here for the extra airtime, and I headed into the lab here to push a button, unlocking the Stump Lab. I also grabbed the Left Elf Charm, but like many other trinkets, it would never be used. Back to the upper yard now, and more specifically the Shed Porch, where I went onto the table and inserted the Fuse to unlock the Undershed area of the map. While up here, I collected the toenails from the ash tray, as we would need a bunch of them later on. I scanned my hand and headed into the Undershed, making sure to gather everything from the storage shelves as well as the fresh storage recipe. I made sure to first head to the pipe to collect twinkling shells, as I knew I would need to massively upgrade my weapons to make up for my lack of defense. I also decided it was time for our first Black Widow. I used the Pinch Whacker here, as it has no elements, meaning it will do the most damage of any of my weapons. This fight really wasn't that hard, and I have a weird feeling that this Widow has less health than the others on the map. Regardless, I took it out without taking any damage at all, and was rewarded with a Black Widow Fang and a Super Spider Venom. Time to head into the lab now, where I flicked the lever, and then headed into the Mant boss fight. Oh, hello there! This guy is a boss, but is he really? 
My axe was really good here, as he is weak to fresh and not resistant to chopping. Plus, Chopper further increased my damage, making this an easy fight. And another win for me, making me now 3-0 and oh against the bosses. I looted his body for the gold card, and then headed to free Wendell, not forgetting the glorious recipe. I talked to Wendell and gave him the grilled science, and then grabbed the figurine, unlocking phase 2 of Rascal Rogue. With Wendell following, I headed to the Java-matic and threw a bomb. My bomb went through the glass, but luckily it was still able to break it. If it didn't, I probably would have cried. I placed the embiggening cell and would come back later to complete the final defence. We had a few more molars, so I had to spend them to increase my max stamina and decrease my hunger and thirst rain. As you can see, I've been doing a lot of molar collecting and upgrading that I haven't shown. I also used the Megas to max out my max consumable stack size at 30. Want to see a magic trick? I got the table gum scabby through the gum. I discovered the stump in the upper yard, which finally unlocked the third and final phase of Natural Explorer meaning I was now faster than ever before. With all of that additional speed, I decided to head into the stump lab and grab the mantis kebab recipe, which we would of course need to summon the mantis later on. I then parkoured my way up to the computer to access it, before heading back down to grab the stump lab chip. I took on yet another Black Widow, but this time I was only rewarded with a single fang. Of course, it was time to spend more milk molars, upgrading my maximum health and stamina, and then maxing out my max resource stack size. I headed back to the Oak Lab and gave Burgle the stump chip in return for 5,000 raw science. I used this raw science to unlock the recipes for the jewels, and then used the super duper to dupe a bunch of toenails, since they take forever to respawn. After duping, I used them to make the toenail scimitar, which is one of my personal favourite weapons at the moment. And of course, I decided to go down the spicy path with this weapon, meaning we only needed one more elemental weapon. With the remaining toenails I had duplicated, I headed to the Java-matic and inserted them into the machine before using my handy gnat to repair all of the mixer modules ready for later. I unlocked the storage room to get the Mant figurine and then made my way over to the Mordor castle where I was able to grab the Moldy Note, unlocking the Moldy Hoagie, which we would need to summon the infected Broodmother later, as well as the Mordor figurine before leaving as I didn't have a sour weapon to take on the director yet. But that was all about to change, as I made myself the Rusty Spear and upgraded it down the Sour Path. The reason I always make this weapon sour is because if you throw it underwater, it will one-shot any enemy. At this point, all of my weapons were level 7, meaning I needed Twinkling Shells for more upgrades. I used 6 more molars to max out my health upgrades, as I knew we'd need high health, so that I could at least take one hit from the more powerful enemies later on. My ovens had done some more cooking, so I upgraded a bunch of my weapons to level 8, meaning they were now really strong. While running around, I also managed to get the third and final stage of Cardio Fan, which means I now had one of my favourite mutations maxed out. <laughs> time for the Director. And this time, I chose to go with Shocking Dismissal, Cardio Fan, Coupe de Gras, Spicy Safety and Meat Shield. Spicy Safety was mostly to counter the Orc Weaver Juniors, and I was hoping I could deal huge damage with my Spear. The fight started, and I had already regretted choosing the Spear, as clearly it didn't do much damage. But after a pretty easy fight, I was able to take out the Director on the first attempt, unlocking Corporate Kickback, and giving me the Hard Disk. This meant my record against the bosses was now 4-0, but the hardest three were the three that I had left. Speaking of enemies that are tough to kill, it was time to take on some wasps, as I needed to open up the composter. While doing this, I was able to max out the chopper mutation, making my axe more powerful than ever. Eventually, I was able to destroy the first wasp nest. Obviously, I had turned faction reactivity back on in the game settings, so that the wasps would get mad at me. I wasn't sure if I needed to do this or not, but I did it just in case. I then headed over to another nest and decided to break it without killing the wasps, as I didn't want to fight them. This gave the message that the hive had been disturbed, meaning only one thing. It was time to sleep. And upon doing so, I got the cutscene showing the wasps bursting out of the composter, meaning it was time for us to go in. I was collecting the sour candies from the wormhole rocket when I somehow picked up a bag with the wondrous wormhole trinket. Talk about lucky. Woo! 
yeah, baby! That's what I've been waiting for! I also grabbed the Shield Solidifier Trinket while in here before heading into the Wasp Queen's Nest and grabbing the recipe for the BBQ Medley from the Skeleton. With the Forgotten Burgle chip collected, we now had every single chip in the game. This wasn't an objective, but I thought it was cool nonetheless. I also now had enough Super Spider Venom to make the Widow Dagger and upgrade it to level 8 Salty. I cooked myself the BBQ Medley and then headed back to the Salt Mines in the Sandbox to collect more salt. While here, I somehow managed to get another Elemental Trinket, the Shiny Salt Crystal. I was getting extremely lucky for things that I was never going to use. Next, it was off to the hedge to farm spiderlings in order to unlock stage 3 of Assassin for the Wasp Queen fight. Speaking of preparation, I also made some waspidotes to counter the poison effect from the wasps. Time for the fight, and before starting, I consumed a human food, liquid rage, green machine and sticky slop. I also popped a bandage and ate a spider slider before spawning the boss. The mutations equipped are on the left of the screen. Instantly, you can see I'm doing a lot of damage with effects, but the Wasp Queen's main strength is her summons. Luckily, we were on medium, meaning her summons are much weaker and importantly, much less frequent too. This allowed me to roll through her with five Wasp Goats to spare. This unlocked Bardic Inspiration and she gave me a bunch of drops. Not to mention, we were now 5-0 against the bosses. Time to craft a bunch of Salt Arrows. I wonder why? Because it's time for boss number 6, the Mantis. I switched my mutations and drank one of each smoothie yet again, as it was time for the hardest boss yet. But like I said, I had a plan. I had 120 salt arrows for a reason. Now I know what you're thinking. But Paralyzer, all you do is complain about cheese. Yeah, I do. But this boss is, is worse than cheese. Without armor, I would need either 500 smoothies and insane luck, or Jesus to help me. This boss gives too many debuffs, with absolutely no way to avoid them, so this is the only way. And hey, technically, she could still hit me all fight. She just has bad pathing and couldn't catch me. It's not my fault. Eventually, I won the fight with 70 salt arrows remaining, unlocking the Apex Predator mutation and giving me the final drops that I needed in order to make the summon for the last boss. Of course, this also meant that we were 6-0 against bosses, with one left, which just happens to be the hardest boss in the entire game. In preparation for this, I upgraded a Tonel Scimitar to fresh level 9. Now earlier, I mentioned I was going to use the Power Droplet and my fists in this fight, but this challenge took a while, and by the time I'd gotten here, that strategy was patched, meaning I was going to need to fight her properly, making this much, much harder. I set up my hotbar with all of the smoothies I needed, and I opted for the Shield Solidifier Trinket, to make sure I could hold block on some attacks to avoid damage, which is the key to winning this fight. Deal lots of damage and take none. Oh, oh, nah, I never knew that. I never knew that. In terms of mutations, I went for Shocking Dismissal, Spicy Safety, Cardio Fan, Blade Master, and Coupe de Gras for maximum damage. I ate my Spider Slider and then summoned her. While on her way down, I accidentally threw my Toenail Scimitar. Not a great start. In stage 1, I perfect blocked her attacks, and when hitting her, I was doing immense damage, which gave me massive confidence. Not long after, stage 1 was over, and I hadn't been hit, meaning we didn't have a single stack of the healing debuff that would prevent me from completing this fight. Before stage 2 started, I drank my smoothies. I hadn't bothered with them in stage 1, as it's very easy, and I only had limited smoothies. Stage 2 went amazingly, yet again not taking a single hit. The only healing debuff was from the Cloud of Dust, but now we move on to Stage 3, the hardest of them all. It started very well, I was blocking some of the really hard combos. But early into the third stage, I took my first hit of the fight, increasing that healing debuff to 1, taking me one step closer to death. Around halfway through Stage 3, I took another hit, increasing the healing debuff to 2 now. Partway through stage 3, I blocked a scream, and this actually fully resets your block meter, which was something I didn't know. Getting later into the fight, and I took another hit from one of the super fast combos, which are really hard to parry. The fight was almost at the end, and it was time to see if I could finish it off. I started getting overconfident, and took two more hits in a row, taking the healing debuff to 5. 
but it was too little too late for the infected Broodmother as I blocked one final combo and finished her off, meaning we had beaten every boss without dying and with no armor, ticking off one of our goals. I am flabbergasted. I also got all of the other garbage that this boss drops, but I wasn't going to use any of it. While on the way home, I decided to do the Grasslands Mixer, as this is the easiest one to do in the game, and by doing this, I unlocked stage 1 of Guard Dog to help me complete the final defense. I made sure to build a lean 2 by the final defense and set my spawn in case I somehow died, and then started the Javamatic. This is the build I went for to defend the three modules. I already have made a video on it if you want more detail. The Sour Rusty Spear was my weapon of choice here, and although I came close to death, it was able to tear through the ants and save me. I also made sure to use the camera mode to check for any enemies preventing them from getting too close. I managed to get the Black Ox Beetle Gold card randomly, and then eventually I was able to complete the mixer, giving me the final embiggening cell, which I then took to the spacer and activated, meaning I could grow big again. As you can see, I somehow got 92%, despite only completing one of the mixers, and took a total of 23 deaths, most of which were from drowning with zero coming from bosses. I also had a total of 1,330 perfect blocks, which is an insane amount. Overall, this challenge was really fun and quite difficult, but my parrying skills were up to the task. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like on it, and I'll see you in the next Grounded video. Have a great rest of your day.